This tutorial is all about the effect of a change of temperature on the rate of a chemical reaction. This tutorial covers the foundation level. Uh, those parts of the syllabus here in yellow are foundation level only and those in white are covered on the foundation and the higher level paper. One of the ways in which you might investigate the effect of a change in temperature on the rate of reaction is to look at a reaction which involves making a gas. This one, which is the reaction of marble chips here with, for example, hydrochloric acid in the tube, produce carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is here collected in a gas syringe. And we can measure the total volume of gas in the gas syringe every 10 or 15 seconds or so until the reaction is completed. You take the results in a table such as this one, starting at, for example, 20 degrees, and you would enter the volume of the gas every 10 seconds until the reaction finished. It might go 0, 15, 29, 35, 42, uh, 46, 47, 48, 48, 48, 48 and so on and then you do it at uh, other temperatures for example at 30 degrees we might get results like naught then 20 and then 39 and 46 and then 50 and then 50 and then 50 and so on and you do this at a 10 degree difference each time. You then plot your results on a graph of time along the bottom against the volume of carbon dioxide on the side and each of the graphs would give you a curve a little like this, for example this one at 20 degrees C and if we were to draw one for 30 degrees C it might look like this and at 40 degrees C it might be a little steeper. The steepness of the graph giving you a measure of the rate of reaction and the more steep the graph is at the beginning the faster the initial rate of reaction. This would show you that the higher the temperature the faster the rate of reaction. Explaining this requires something called the reacting particle model. Now what you have to understand is that many chemical reactions occur because of collisions between particles. All matter is made out of particles and these particles can only react with each other if they physically collide with each other. Now the rate of the reaction will depend upon just how many successful collisions there are between particles or more importantly the rate of those collisions or how frequent they are. When you increase the temperature of a substance, that means that the particles gain energy. They gain kinetic energy, which makes them move around faster. If the particles are moving around faster, then the collisions that they have will be, first of all, more frequent. But also, those collisions are more likely to be successful collisions because the collisions will have much more energy. And if they're more energetic collisions, these are collisions which are more likely to result in the particles reacting with each other and making the product. Glancing collisions or low energy collisions are unlikely to lead to a successful reaction. This is shown on this picture. On the left, we have a solid which is represented by the black particles which are close together. And we have a solution, or particles in solution. This might, for example, be the hydrochloric acid, which is represented by the red particles which are moving. And the movement of those particles is represented by the size of the arrows. On the left-hand side, at a low temperature, the particles have got a low amount of energy, a low amount of kinetic energy, which means that they are moving slowly. They'll collide with the solid particles, but not very frequently. On the right-hand side, however, these particles here of the acid have got more energy and therefore they're going to collide with the solid particles much more frequently. And also the collisions with the solid particles are going to have more energy. They're going to hit them harder and that's going to lead to more successful collisions and therefore a faster rate of reaction. So raising the temperature increases the rate of reaction because the collisions are more frequent and have more energy. 
Here's a past paper question. Louise and Anne investigate the reaction between magnesium and hydrochloric acid. Look at the diagram, it shows the apparatus they use. Well here they're using another solid, this time magnesium, in an acid, hydrochloric acid. And this would react to produce hydrogen gas, and the hydrogen gas would travel through the apparatus and collect in the gas syringe. So they're using 0.2 grams of magnesium and 25 cubic centimetres of hydrochloric acid and the temperature of the acid is 25 degrees Celsius. Look at the graph, it shows their results. The first question says, what volume of gas is made in the first four minutes? For this type of question you'd use a ruler and read up from the four minute mark up to the curve and read across to the other scale and this would read 15 cubic centimetres. The reaction eventually stops. Explain why. Well here the reaction has stopped when the volume of the gas has reached about 25 cubic centimetres and this is because of one of two reasons. Um, it would be because the acid has all been used up or alternatively you might say because the magnesium has all been used up or more generally because one or other of the reactants has all been used up. The third part of the question says Louise and Anne do the experiment again. They keep everything the same except the temperature. This time they use a higher temperature on the grid draw the graph they should get. Well here there's two marks. One mark for showing that the graph would be steeper because the reaction is faster and one mark for levelling the final volume of gas off at the same as previously. And these are the answers to those questions. First one being 15 cubic centimetres. The second one being that either the acid is used up or the magnesium is used up or generally the reactant is used up. And the third one, two marks, one for a line steeper than the original but both levelling off at 25 cubic centimetres as I suggested. And here's another exam question. Magnesium ribbon reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid. Look at the photograph. It shows 0.5 grams of magnesium ribbon reacting with 70 cubic centimetres of dilute hydrochloric acid. Look at the equation for this reaction, which is written here for us. Write down the formula of one product of the reaction. Well, this is quite straightforward. On the left-hand side of any chemical equation such as this will be the reactants. The products are written on the right-hand side. They're only asking for the formula, not the name of a product. So we would write, for example, MgCl2, or we might write H2. Either of those would be accepted. And finally, if hot acid is used instead of cold acid, the reaction goes much faster. Explain why, using ideas about particles. Here we'd say that at a higher temperature, the particles gain energy and move faster so getting on to the particle collision theory there are more frequent collisions and let's go overboard and more energetic collisions. Now that's a very full answer and there's probably far too much there for two marks. Let's have a look at the mark scheme now. Yes, the first part, either of those two products, we could either have the magnesium chloride or the H2. Um, and second part, the one we just looked at, the particles move faster or they've got more energy and they've got more collisions, preferably more collisions per second, meaning more frequent collisions. They'd also allow more energetic collisions, uh, more successful collisions, uh, and or more particles have enough energy to overcome the activation energy, although strictly that's a higher level answer and uh, not on this part of the specification for you.